Many people ask me about how can you overcome scarring. And in a several part series, we'd like to talk about wound modulation or biologic scar modification. And in so doing, we're going to talk about eyelid retraction or white under the eyes or the eyelids pulled down. And we're also going to talk about scars on the face, such as after a cancer surgery or something that very similar. So our surgical techniques have advanced incrementally with smaller incisions and we can do things better. But the biology of the disease or wound modifiers really offer the potential for us to have a paradigm shift and to alter how we treat these diseases. I'm going to start by talking about eyelid retraction and some of the causes. This can be caused after a, po after a blepharoplasty or after some type of other surgery to the lower eyelid or even if you're just born with prominent eyes and have had some type of surgery or some type of scarring process. We'll deal with the treatment of prominent eyes elsewhere in this video series, but also I want to now talk about how we can overcome the scarring which makes things even worse in this condition. Post-surgical eyelid retraction presents a very unique problem. There's a prominent eye component and we're going to discuss how we can reduce the prominent eye component often in a very simple way in a relatively small surgery to remove a little bit of fat and move the eye back. But for this portion of the lecture and discussion, we're going to talk about the tether or the scar that forms, as you can see in the pink, on and around the lower eyelid. This has been treated in many ways in the past using hard palate grafts or other type of augmentation. This is shown in green in, in this slide. These slides uh, demonstrate that this can be an effective technique early on, but as you can see, it often fails with further scarring and the eyelid returns to its normal position. We define a tether or an inability of the eyelid to move due to scarring as shown in the slide here where the eyelid just doesn't move up no matter how hard we push it. And this requires often a biologic solution in addition to some surgery. There aren't many options in these cases. You can do additional surgery with grafts and sometimes that can work well and we resort to those. But also in some of these cases where they're more mild or in addition to surgery, we can use biologic wound modifiers. And the safest one is probably 5-fluorouracil. And that really works to inhibit the scar formation and the proliferation of the cells that cause scarring. And I use it almost every day in my clinical treatment of patients and it works extraordinarily well. I often use it in combination with tissue expansion and you're actually stretching the tissue because over time expanding tissue and can be stretched and that scar can be stretched in addition to the biologic wound modifiers. 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU is an anti-metabolite and it doesn't last long. In fact, we use it in very, very small doses and it binds into the DNA and prevents cells from proliferating or from dividing, especially the scarring cells. It also prevents the formation of collagen. 5-FU has been used to treat keloids for many years and more recently we in the laboratory discovered that it, it inhibits hyaluronan and the production of all the matrix materials that are required for scar formation. We use tissue expansion in the form of Restylane or gels or even physical expansion and this creates a synergy. It allows the scarring to stretch and the tissue to expand and this can often be with a very non-surgical approach. We use this in eyelid retraction scar modification after cancer surgeries and in addition to scarring in contracted sockets where people don't have an eye. The next animated series of slides shows how we inject the anti-scarring material and the tissue expansion at the same time in the office in a relatively painless way and how this over time, often two or three series of injections, usually about two to four weeks apart, can really expand the tissue and allow people to have a normal feel of the tissue and a normal function of the tissue, which is most important. We use this combination for patients who especially have really difficult problems, such as a facial nerve paralysis or other scarring due to surgery. And what it does is, again, stretches the tissues of the lower eyelids, such as shown in this patient, with an immobile scar to the orbital rim. In fact, the eyelid cannot be pushed up and the upper eyelid cannot blink all that well due to a former surgery and paralysis. We often use the combination of Hyaluronan or Restylane with 
5-FU to prevent and to inhibit the scar formation. Even scars that are many years old can often be helped in this way. Other circumstances are especially problematic in patients and we often are required to do this in, in combination with surgeries to use both the expansion and the anti-scarring material. As shown in this slide, there's a good achievement, an improvement with surgery in addition to the anti-scarring. Next patient shown also had skin grafting, which can be used and is often helpful in this treatment with aggressive scar modification using the 5-FU and tissue expansion. Even previous implants can often cause tethering to the, to the eyelid and problems. This is a case where there's a lower eyelid, which was essentially scarred to the orbital rim or to the implant that was placed. And progressive and gradual combinations of the 5 fluorouracil and the Restylane, in addition to a small amount of surgery, was able to release this tissue and form a very normal looking lower eyelid despite this patient suffering a significant amount of trauma. I hope this helped to show what is possible with biologic scar modification. We can achieve very good results using this without surgery to allow patients to have normally functioning eyelids and I think that this method can be very used very well with surgery.